Okay, here's our final podcast for standard 2.4. In this podcast, we're gonna take a look at cellular respiration that happens in the mitochondria, and we're also going to be comparing cellular respiration and photosynthesis. So aerobic cellular respiration is a process that requires oxygen. So when we talk about something being aerobic, that means it requires oxygen to occur. So if you're doing aerobic exercise, that means you are breathing heavily, you're trying to get more oxygen into your body. So cellular respiration is an aerobic process because it requires oxygen in order to occur. Um, this part of cellular respiration is going to happen in the mitochondrion after a glycolysis. Remember that glycolysis happens in the cytoplasm. And that's where we're going to split our glucose in half. And then those two pieces of glucose that we split in half, called pyruvic acid, will then move into the mitochondrion where we can finish breaking them down and we can get all of the energy that we can from our glucose molecules. Okay, so those pyruvic acid molecules will go into that mitochondrion along with the NADH that was made during glycolysis um, and those processes and those chemicals are going to be used in order to make all of our ATP. Remember, when there is oxygen available, that is where we're going to get our most efficient um, production of ATP. So the process of cellular respiration happens in two steps. The first is called the Krebs cycle, also known as the citric acid cycle. Um, so it's named after the guy who discovered it. His name was Krebs. Interesting last name, but there it is. Um, and then followed by the Krebs cycle, you will have the electron transport chain. So the nice part about cellular respiration, we're not going to go into quite as much detail as we did with the photosynthesis piece of it. So we're just going to kind of break it down into its most basic steps. So we're just going to start with the Krebs cycle. In the Krebs cycle, remember that pyruvic acid that we had from glycolysis um, is going to enter into the mitochondrion and it's going to get broken down into carbon dioxide in a series of energy extracting steps. So basically those pyruvic acid molecules are going to move around literally what looks, it's almost like a cycle. And as they move around that cycle, they start out as a three carbon molecule and then they'll get broken down into a two carbon molecule and then they'll get broken down and they'll have one carbon left, which will combine with some oxygen, and that will make our CO2. And that CO2 is what we actually are going to release as waste when we breathe out. Um, so every time that we're breaking one of these carbon bonds that are in this pyruvic acid molecules, we are going to release energy. So during this, this part, um, or this process from the pyruvic acid molecules that we have in there. Remember, two pyruvic acid molecules were made from splitting the glucose. We're going to end up netting four ATP during that process. Um, and that's because there's four bonds to break. For each pyruvic acid, there's two bonds, one, two. We break those two bonds, there's an AP, ATP coming out of each one. So we're going to net four ATP during this process in the Krebs cycle. So it's still not nearly enough, not quite what we need to get from every glucose. So after the Krebs cycle, we then move on to the electron transport chain. And the electron transport chain is going to grab some high energy electrons that were generated during the Krebs cycle and during glycolysis. Um, and all of those electrons are being carried by that NADH that we talked about before. Um, and so we're going to take these, this energy that's attached to these electrons that are being carried by the NADH and we're going to make that into lots and lots of ATP. So we're going to take some many, uh, lots of ADP and we're going to add phosphates to them and we're going to store that energy temporarily in our ATP molecules. This is where the oxygen requirement comes in. So in order for the electron transport chain to work, you have to have oxygen available. Um, and that is because the oxygen is actually going to be helping with this process of ATP synthase. ATP synthase is a special enzyme um, that is inside the mitochondria and its job is to convert ADP into ATP. It's very similar to the ATP synthase that we talked about in photosynthesis. Um, and during the process of making the ATP, we also make water as a waste um, during this because hydrogen molecules move through the ATP synthase and combine with oxygen on the other side and you end up making water when you combine hydrogen and oxygen together. And the water is actually then released as a waste. Um, and at the end of the electron transport chain, we are going to have a total of 36 ATP that are made. The electron transport chain itself makes 30 ATP. Okay, so not just from breaking down the uh, 
the glucose molecules, and each carbon breaking down is going to give us some. But then these high energy electrons that were generated from this breaking down process, as they move through this electron transport chain, we end up generating another 30. So we had two ATP from glycolysis, four from the Krebs cycle, and then 30 from the electron transport chain, and that gives us our total of 36. So one glucose molecule gives us 36 ATP. That's pretty good. So in this little picture here, we're just going to kind of um, label what's happening at these different places. So here we have our mitochondrion right in the middle, and you can see the Krebs cycle happens in there, as does the electron transport chain. Remember, glycolysis happens out in the cytoplasm. So glucose is going to go into the glycolysis, and it's going to get broken down. And during that process, we're going to make our 2 ATP. The glycolysis is going to get broken down into pyruvic acid, which will enter the Krebs cycle. Also during this time, we're going to make our NADH, which will enter the electron transport chain. The pyruvic acid is going to go into the Krebs cycle, and as a waste product of that, we're going to make CO2, and during that process, we make our 4 ATP. Um, any other high energy electrons that get generated during the Krebs cycle are also going to move over to the electron transport chain. Combining with that NADH, oxygen goes into the electron transport chain, we generate another 30 ATP out, and we get our water as a waste product of that whole process. So there's three steps that are going to happen within the process of breaking down glucose, and each one is going to give us more and more ATP as we go along. And remember, our carbon dioxide and our water are just coming out as waste products of this whole thing. The whole point of this was to get our 36 ATP. That's what we needed. That's what we had to do to get it. All right, so let's summarize this. Cellular respiration occurs in the mitochondrion. Remember, that only happens when oxygen is available. The two steps of cellular respiration, the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain. Um, so after glycolysis, after you get that um, glucose split in half, and then it can enter into the mitochondria, then we split it down the rest of the way, and then we have the electron transport chain happen. Okay. Remember, it's glucose in the form of the pyruvic acid is used in the Krebs cycle, and that's where our carbon dioxide gets produced is during the Krebs cycle. And then the, water, the oxygen that we need for cellular respiration is going to get used during the electron transport chain, and that is when we're going to make our waste product of water. So the glucose is getting used during the Krebs, the oxygen is getting used during the electron transport chain, and we're making our carbon dioxide and water. Remember, the whole point of this was to make our 36 total ATP. And we also actually have some cells in our body that are extra efficient at this, like our muscle cells, and sometimes our muscle cells can make 38 ATP, um, just because they're a little bit better at doing the whole cellular respiration process, because they need to be, um, because they're generating, or they're using so much energy to do their jobs. Okay, so this is just a simple little flow chart kind of showing you the steps that go along. So remember, we're starting with our glucose and oxygen. We go through glycolysis. From glycolysis, and remember glycolysis is happening in the cytoplasm. And then when there's oxygen available, we move it to the Krebs cycle and the electron transport chain, and those two are happening in the mitochondrion. And from that, we are going to get our carbon dioxide and water as waste products, but remember the whole point of this is to get those 36 ATP out at the end. All right, the last thing that we're going to talk about is the carbon cycle. Um, the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration occur in a cycle, a continuous cycle, all the time. Um, and what is used in one is what is going to be produced in the other. Um, and this is something that is talked about a lot in biology. Okay, so when we look at this, when we're talking about photosynthesis and cellular respiration occurring in the cycle, we actually call that the carbon cycle. We will actually go over that in more detail um, later in the year. Um, lots of things get cycled within this cycle. So one of the things is energy. So remember that photosynthesis is taking energy from the sun and putting it into glucose, right? So we're converting the light energy into chemical energy and storing it in glucose. Um, and then cellular respiration's job is to release that energy from the glucose and makes the ATP. And remember, ATP is just a more usable form of energy for our cells to use. 
Okay, so we're taking the energy from the sun and putting it in glucose, and then we're taking the energy from glucose and putting it into ATP, and we're going to use it in that way. Um, so the energy doesn't ever cycle back to the sun. The sun is the ultimate source. But the energy that we don't end up using within our cells is actually going to get released as heat. All right. Waste products also get recycled during this whole process. The oxygen gas that gets released by photosynthesis, um, that's a waste of photosynthesis. That O2 that gets released is required for cellular respiration to happen efficiently. So the waste product that the plants are producing is actually being used during the process of cellular respiration. Same thing goes for the carbon dioxide. When we do cellular respiration and we break down that glucose, we're making carbon dioxide. Well, that carbon dioxide is what is needed in order for photosynthesis to happen so that you can make your glucose. So those waste products are getting cycled all the time. Um, and that's why plants are such an important part of our ecosystem because they are producing oxygen for us. Um, they also are producing their own carbon dioxide because they do do cellular respiration as well as photosynthesis. So we kind of need them more than they need us. Okay, so we can summarize this in a very brief couple of statements. Um, the products of photosynthesis, remember the products of photosynthesis are what gets made, that's glucose and oxygen. Those are the reactants of cellular respiration. Those are what are going to get used in cellular respiration. And conversely, the products of cellular respiration, the things that get made by cellular respiration, carbon dioxide and water, are the things that are going to be the reactants or going to get used by photosynthesis. So we can fill that in on this little chart. So for photosynthesis, we're making our glucose and oxygen. Those are going to get used in cellular respiration to make the carbon dioxide and water, which will then be used by photosynthesis to make glucose and oxygen, and it just keeps cycling over and over and over again. Um, and those are two chemical processes that really do occur in a very nice, tight little cycle.